Hello friends, we are discussing reproduction in bacteria. We have seen that it occurs by two methods, asexual reproduction and parasexual reproduction. We have already discussed asexual reproduction in the previous video. You can refer my video, the link is given in the description box. Today we are going to discuss about parasexual reproduction in bacteria. Many places this parasexual reproduction is mentioned as sexual reproduction. This we discussed in the last video also. But actually it is not sexual reproduction. Let us see why. Sexual reproduction involves fusion of male and female gametes and formation of zygote. But this type of process is absent in bacteria. Still genetic recombination is present which is responsible for genetic diversity and genetic drift in bacterial species. So how this genetic recombination occurs? Genetic recombination is possible by transfer of some genes from one bacterium to another. Hence, it is not termed as sexual reproduction but parasexual reproduction. In bacteria, it occurs by three methods, transformation, conjugation and transduction. Here we are going to see transformation and conjugation. So let us see them one by one. First is transformation. This involves transformation of one kind of bacteria into another by taking up foreign DNA from its surroundings. It was first discovered by Griffith in 1928. Further, Work was done by Avery MacLeod and McCarty to show what is the transforming material in bacteria. According to Griffith's experiment, there are two strains of Diplococcus pneumonia. Griffith did his experiment on Diplococcus pneumonia. He saw that there are two strains of this bacteria present. First is S-type, which is smooth because it is capsulated and it is virulent. That means it causes disease. Second is R-type, which is rough because it is non-capsulated and it is avirulent. That means it does not cause disease. So how this experiment was done, let us see the steps. First of all, S-type was injected into mouse and mouse died because it is virulent. It causes the disease and mouse died. When R-type was injected into mouse, mouse survived as it is avirulent. Heat killed S-type injected into mouse, mouse survived because the virulent bacteria is heat killed. So no disease is caused and hence mouse survived. But when heat killed S-type was mixed with alive R-type and injected into the mouse, mouse died. That means disease has occurred. But how is it possible? Because S-type, which is virulent one, is dead. It is heat killed. And only the R-type, which is avirulent, is alive. So what it was concluded that R-type is transformed into S-type. That means avirulent bacteria was transformed into virulent bacteria which caused the disease and this was the result of mouse death or because of this mouse died. Further experiments proved that transformation is caused due to hereditary material of S-type. In this case it is DNA. We will not go into the molecular detail because we have already discussed in the molecular biology DNA as the hereditary material. You can refer my video. The link is given in the description box. So what it was seen that for the transformation, living donor is not required. Only hereditary material is required for the transformation. And here, the R-type bacteria has the ability to take up this extracellular genetic material. Extracellular genetic material because it is not present in R-type bacteria, but it is coming from outside. So this capability of the bacteria is known as competency and such cells which are capable of or which has the ability to take up the extracellular genetic material are known as 
competent cell. Second method is conjugation. It was discovered by Lederberg and Tatum in 1946 in E. coli. Strain was K12. It was further described by Woolman and Jacob in 1966. It is the primitive method of parasexual reproduction in prokaryotes and it involves direct transfer of genome. Conjugation is shown by dimorphic bacteria, means bacteria in which two types of bacterial cells are present. Male, which is also known as F plus or donor cell because F plasmid is present and female, also known as F minus or recipient cell as F plasmid is absent. Male or donor cell pauses genes for producing sex pili and other characteristics required for gene transfer in its plasmid. Hence, one to four sex pili are present on the surface. These sex pili are protoplasmic outgrowths or filamentous protrusions. In the female or recipient cell, Sex pili or fertility factors are absent as F plasmid is absent. Now let us see this process or the steps that are involved in this conjugation process. When the donor and recipient two types of cells come close to each other, pillars attach and pull recipient bacteria close to the donor. Then pillars establishes a conjugation tube or protoplasmic bridge with the female cell. Replication of donor cell plasmid occurs. How this occurs? One strand of plasmid is transferred to the recipient through the conjugation tube. Recipient synthesize the complementary strand of single standard plasmid received from the donor cell. Once completed, recipient cell also becomes donor cell or F plus cell. If the F plasmid of the donor cell is integrated in the cell's chromosome, then a part of chromosomal DNA can also get transferred with F plasmid. So if F plasmid is integrated in the chromosomal DNA, then during the transfer of this F plasmid, some of the genes present in the chromosomal DNA also get transferred. Hence, conjugation is the means of producing new genetic combination or we can say that it is the means of recombination. Now, let us understand this conjugation with the help of diagram. This is donor male or F plus cell and this is recipient female or F minus cell. So, the donor cell has chromosomal DNA, F plasmid and sex pillars. And the recipient cell has only chromosomal DNA, F plasmid is absent. When these two cells come closer, then the pillars of the donor cell attaches with recipient cell and pulls it closer. After that, protoplasmic bridge or conjugation tube is established. Then one strand of this double-stranded F plasmid is transferred from the donor to the recipient cell. This recipient cell now synthesizes the complementary strand of this single strand which is transferred. And once this strand is transferred, this donor cell also has single strand of the F plasmid. Hence, it also synthesizes the complementary strand. So now both the cell has double stranded F plasmid. This is the original donor or F plus cell and after the conjugation, this recipient also becomes new donor cell or F plus cell or male cell. This is all for today's video. In the next video, we will discuss about transduction. So stay tuned. If you like this video, please hit the like button, share it and subscribe my channel. Thank you.